Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another fun and great tutorial that we're going to do today. So I've actually got some requests on Facebook to make this tutorial, so I'm doing this for you guys. And what this is really going to do today is we're going to be looking at a data set like the one you see in front of us. And this is a data set I pulled off of uh, Kaggle, which talks about attrition in an organization, whether people are leaving or whether they're staying. Um, we are going to be using this data set in the future to do build a machine learning model as well. But for today, what I wanted to walk through is how do you start to pull relevant information out of this, you know, filter certain things uh, and so forth. And so the other question you may be wondering is, well, why do I need to know SQL for Excel? Let me tell you one thing about data science and machine learning and all that stuff. I would say knowing things like Python, knowing things like R, and especially being able to work with SQL is a huge, huge skill set. And I would say SQL sometimes is a little bit more broad. And what I mean by that is a lot of machine learning engineers use it, a lot of data scientists use it to extract data. But at the same time, so do data analysts that don't necessarily work in a machine learning environment. Being able to extract data in a very efficient way is a very highly sought out skill today. And there's still a lot of organizations out there using things like Excel, and they haven't quite mastered how to start manipulating that data and actually start going in and, and massaging it so that they can tell a story from it. And SQL is a great way to go ahead and not only extract that information, but you can even build algorithms within SQL. And while I'm showing you how to do this in Python, the reason why I'm showing you how to do this in Python is I would say this is a little bit more production friendly. You can go ahead and, and automate a lot of this stuff connected with other Python code, like an auto emailer, for example. Whereas if you're using something like Microsoft Workbench to pull the information, first you're going to import that data into some kind of an SQL database. Then you're going to use Workbench to extract that data and, and do the SQL querying against it. Then you're going to take that result and put it back, likely either into a database or into Excel. What this does is it eliminates all of those steps because you can go directly to the source, which is Excel, and you can output directly to Excel. If you want to output to a database, you can do that. If you want to output to an algorithm, you can do that. And so that's why this is such a preferred method nowadays. And I know my large team today, data scientists, data analysts, machine learning engineers, data engineers, all of my team actually use this quite often because it's such an easy way to extract data. So I just wanted to mention that in case people were wondering why we're doing it this way. And as I'm creating this data, I also want to call out one more thing. I got a question, another question on Facebook, and people were asking me and saying, if I can't host some of this code on my internal server, where do I host it? Um, especially things like a Django installation or a Django instance, for example. And, you know, I've looked around a few places. I mean, there's, uh, you know, there's some well-known uh, websites like Heroku and... Um, if you get a VPS solution with companies like NetFirms or Bluehost, those will allow you to actually go ahead and deploy a full-fledged Django installation with a website in the background. I'll create a link for those down below. If you guys are interested, you can check it out. I believe they got some free trials that you can, uh, you can look at as well. But hopefully that answers that user's questions. That's how you do it. All right, let's go on. And so while you can do some of this stuff in Excel... Remember, whenever I build a lot of my tutorials, it's all about scale. And that is, if I have another spreadsheet like this, I don't want to continually do that over and over again. I want to build a small script that I can just hit the button and it'll automate all of this stuff for me. So from popular demand and request, what I'm going to be showing you is how do you access all of this information in Python, but using SQL. So at the, essentially, you're going to be able to write an SQL script that's going to allow you to pull this data however you choose. You can filter data, you can pull data in Excel. The challenge though is that, you know, again, I talked about the scale, but the second piece is this data can get very, very messy to work with, especially if you got formulas in there and you're trying to do certain things like, uh, you know, limit it based on a certain number of fields. It can also get slow in Excel just by using the filters. Excel, I believe, does have some kind of an SQL module, but it's a little bit cumbersome from what I hear to work with. So anyways, I'm going to show you how to do this in Python using pandas with very minimal line of code. So let's get right to it. So we're going to go ahead and build something that's going to allow us to take all this data and ingest it into Python. And so the best way to do that, obviously, is to use pandas. But I'm also going to introduce you to something called SQLite 3, which is a built-in module within Python that allows you to use a mini version, we'll call it, of MySQL. Um, and it, it'll actually build a database for you within Python itself. If you have small applications or you want analysis that's not going to be 
databases and databases long and wide, then this is a great way to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and import a few different modules that we're going to work with today. And I'm going to show you how to build this. And the best thing is you can build this one of two ways. You can go ahead and either build this using a permanent database that you can that you can use with uh, SQLite 3 or you can store it in your memory. And we're going to store it in our memory because as I'm doing analysis, I don't really need to go ahead and build another database on top. I just want to be able to pull the information from Excel. Then I want to manipulate it, do my SQL query against it, and then destroy that data set and be left with the output only. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to define a few variables here. So what I've done is I've imported SQLite 3 again, built into Python, so you shouldn't have a problem importing that. Pandas, we've already talked about several times. And then SQL Alchemy is um, another great module that you can just do pip install SQL Alchemy, depending on whether you have Python 2 or 3. Hopefully you've all migrated to 3 by now because 2 is going to be gone very soon. And the file we're going to use is this Excel file that I was working with. Um, and so this is uh, called Employee Attrition. It's sitting in the exact same folder, so I don't need to worry about uh, going ahead and defining a path for it because I'm putting it in the same folder. So we're going to define an input and then the output for you is optional. That is, if you want to actually have it export within another Excel file, you can do that. If not, you don't have to do it. I just encourage you to leave it in there and if you don't need it, you can always comment it out. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and create what we call our engine, which is going to be the back end running all of this stuff. So you're going to go engine is equal to create underscore engine and this is all available in the SQLite docs so I'm not creating this from from out of nowhere this is literally coming straight from the docs um, and I can link the docs for you in the description below and so as I'm coding this I'm gonna go ahead and explain to you what I'm doing here when I go ahead and create something like SQL engine and then I have this what we'll call this an empty link so it's creating an SQLite database but then I don't have a link after that what that basically means is I'm putting it in my random access memory. I'm not going ahead and creating a new database. If I wanted to create a new database, I would add in something like, you know, um, info.db or something like that. And then it would create a database in whatever path I've specified. But I don't want to do that. I just want to create this in memory because once I'm done with it, I want to get rid of it. And so really, you know, one of the things I can tell you is this is really constrained by how much RAM your computer has. So if you've got a strong computer with great RAM, you can run millions, 10 million rows of data with no problem in Pandas. Um, so if you have a slower computer, then this may be an issue. But for the most part, you know, if Excel handles about 65 to 100,000 lines or so, bringing that into this should be no problem at all. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our data frame. And we've done this several times before, so we're going to go read underscore Excel and then I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my file which is what I've defined and then the sheet name was actually called let me go back and check so the sheet name was this I'm just gonna copy and paste it and so if I wanna go ahead and just quickly look at my data frame that's what it brings so it brings in everything that we that we talked about uh, that's in that Excel file okay so let's go ahead and get rid of this now the next thing I want to do is I want to create something called df.2 underscore SQL. And what that allows me to do is it's going to allow me to put all of this data in a table that I specify. So the temporary table that I'm going to specify is called employees. And I want to use the engine to fire this in the background here. And that is I want to create a temporary database. So take the employees table, put it in my temporary database that's going to be sitting in memory. And then if it exists today, because I'm doing this analysis and I don't really want to keep the information, I can just use replace. Uh, if you want to keep it, you can also use append, which will just update the database. Um, and then I want to turn my index off because I don't need these indexes. All right, so the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead, and this is really where the SQL starts. So I do results is equal to engine.execute, and then I put in my SQL statement. So let's go ahead for now. Let's just go ahead and say select star from. Uh, it's called employees now because I put it in my employees database. So we're going to go ahead and pull everything and then we'll play around a little bit with um, SQL as well and I'll show you how that works. And really there's two more lines of code. And so final, we're going to take the results and we're going to put it back in a data frame as well because I want to be able to review this in a way that is easier to read 
and then I want to go ahead and define the columns and that's just going to be equal to my original data frame columns because I'm not changing anything around here and then finally this is optional but you can always do uh, this command to go ahead and output it into a new database or into a new Excel file sorry and we'll set index equal to to false so I mean when you look at it very very few lines of code really brought in here and this is where all the magic is going to happen so let's go ahead and print this out and see what it gives us and of course I've got to print the results so right now it's going to go back and return everything that we have in here because I said go ahead and select everything the other thing you'll notice is it's actually created that file output.xls you'll see that it's actually called it's brought in everything here and it's renamed it sheet one alright so now let's go ahead and do a little bit of SQL querying against this let's make it a little bit more constrained to what we want so I'm gonna go ahead and open up employees again and why don't we suggest in this case that we're gonna just pick education field is equal to life sciences so let's go ahead and do that so we're gonna go select star from employees and then we're gonna say where education field is equal to now we're gonna use single quotes here and the reason we're gonna use single quotes here is because we've already used double quotes uh, against the actual SQL statement itself here and we don't want to confuse it in terms of where it's gonna start and stop so let me just make sure I get this uh, right so it's life so let's go ahead and print this out I'm gonna stop the export to Excel for now and we're just gonna put this up here so I don't have to click twice here now if you see it's all constrained to education is equal to life sciences so that's pretty cool and we've got 606 rows and if I took that condition out I believe there were let's just go ahead and see how many there were there were 1470 rows so I mean look how fast that executes too I mean I don't think you'll ever get that kind of speed in Excel okay so let's go ahead and further add a little bit more to this let's say I wanted to also suggest that whatever distance that I'm looking at so the distance from home I want to say is going to be less than let's pick a number here let's go with 25 now if you want to do this and I like doing this in Excel is I like writing my end statements on a separate line you notice that this kind of went black because it doesn't know what's happening you just go back here and you add in this backslash and you and what it tells us is that hey listen there's more on the next line that's part of this uh, statement as well so now I can say and uh, distance from home is less than what did we say 25 or so so let's just see what this gives us and so we should have we have 1470 rows and I believe we had 600 or so rows before so when I run this again now we have 563 rows so it did work so anything less than 25 should be gone from here which it is and so let's go ahead and add some more so we will do this we'll hit slash again next line we'll say and and why don't we say daily rate is greater than three hundred dollars so it'll take out all the all the all the rates that are uh, quite low here so let's go ahead and run this again and now we end up with so we can get rid of this one 484 rows or so now let's say I wanted to go ahead and also not only pick life sciences but I also wanted to pick medical in this case now in SQL, uh, the, the terminology is going to be the same whether you use it in pure SQL, like if you use Workbench or something, versus this. You know, some people will say education field is equal to life sciences and education field is equal to medical. I like using a command called in. Uh, in is just generally you'll find that when you use it, it's a lot more efficient as well. So you'll do something like in life sciences and then you'll do comma and then you'll do medical like this and then close that bracket out and this is basically saying go ahead and pick everything that includes life sciences and medical so we should see medical pop up here let's see if that works and so when you see this now life sciences and medical pops up there and the actual row size is eight or the number of rows is now 862 rows which is pretty cool all right now finally let's go ahead and test to see if we can print this exact same data set out into a new excel format so let's go ahead and unhide this we'll do this and we should be expecting 862 rows let's go ahead and look at output.xlsx and when I look at this I have 
around this dot, around that number, it looks like 800 and something, 862 or so. Yep, so we're good. So remember, the first one's the header. And this includes everything that is medical. This includes everything that has a daily rate above whatever we've defined. So this is a great way to go ahead and start massaging your data. And now let's go back to the use case. Let's think about the use case of where you would use something like this. Think about when you're generating reports for certain stakeholders and you want to be able to you want to be able to take a data set like this and be able to massage it quickly, do some um, configurations against it as such, and then just have it spit out to somebody else. And you can get this auto emailed, you can get whatever, however you want to get this out. And if you're, if you want to know how to automatically send a report to a stakeholder, I'm going to link that above and below, and you'll be able to see how to do that as well. Uh, most of this code is reusable. You can go ahead and uh, you know, specify your input file, your output file, and just your SQL code. And the rest of this you can totally reuse with any file structure out there, any different type of Excel file that you have. So it's a very, very simple code to use and write. So that's kind of the use case behind this. And just using SQL is a great skill set for data scientists to have. So it's one of those things that I would say is, you know, amongst the top five skills that a data scientist needs to have, as mentioned before. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed that uh, little tutorial. Again, I find this skill set extremely, extremely useful. Uh, if you found this information useful, you can always help this channel by clicking, liking, and subscribing, especially if you want to build your skill set with automation, machine learning, and data science. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <music>